I'm not a horn, but if I wasn't a Van Zandt and um, had to pick a family, I would have wanted to have been a horn. Um, I, uh, our family moved to Keystone in 1981, I think, and uh, sat by David in uh, Thelma Allen's fifth grade classroom and, and got to know the horns, and it wasn't long before uh, I was riding around in that gray uh, station wagon with a big CB antenna. And uh, I think one of the more scary uh, adventures I ever had was getting a ride home from a little league practice in a red Dotson pickup truck that uh, pretty much didn't have a bed. There were, a, there were some rust connections in the bed of that truck, but acorns, grass, whatever kind of flew up in there. If you ever rode inside and rode over a mud puddle, you, you, you got just as wet. Um, so that was a lot of fun. But uh, I would be remiss if I didn't just take a chance uh, to publicly let uh, Uncle Larry, as I affectionately call him, uh, that's what my cell phone says when I dial his phone number. And uh, Connie knows just what they've meant to me over the years. Um, if you look back at any pictures in the newspaper, I've had two elections in the past 10 years where I've actually uh, had opposition and had to run for office. I've, I haven't been there at either one of them the night I was elected. But if you look in the newspaper, you'll see my wife and a picture of the horns there with her wherever they're doing something for me. Um, when I graduated from officer candidate school, uh, got married, it just goes on and on. When and I, somehow or another, the guy with a 4.0 and the guy with the GPA, about half of that, got to be best friends in high school. Um, not exactly sure how that worked. I didn't really cheat off his paper, which is proven by my GPA, but it was nice to have, have somebody ask the higher thinking questions to. And, uh, just all, all the larger decisions that I've made in life. Uh, when, when I met Stephanie, uh, there were a couple people I went and introduced her around to to kind of better and make sure she was all right to marry. And they were some of those folks. And uh, when her and I bought a bought a new car for the first time ever, I, I told the dealer, I said, I got to drive it home tonight from Jacksonville and show some folks. Um, and took it to the horns and had them take a ride. I mean, it's, it's just been that kind of relationship over. Uh, over the years, and I really appreciate what you, you do. I, I think uh, you can measure people. We all like our own kids. You kind of have to like your own kids. You gave birth to them. They got your blood in their veins. And you got you got to kind of do whatever for your own kids. But uh, it's really a greater measure when people do things for, for other uh, for other people's kids. My mother passed at a young age, and this one would go see her in uh, her last years and just check up on her. She didn't have to do that. She didn't know my family a thing, but she did. Uh, She'd come pick up her three boys from school and give them a ride home and give me a ride home. I mean, it was just over and over and over. And I really appreciate that, and uh, we love y'all. We're, uh, we're glad that uh, your three boys fit the bill for all this tonight, too. So. Okay. I just wanted to uh, say that uh, it's a real honor that uh, we were asked to be here tonight and you're able to be part of the celebration. In listening to all the words that have been said about Larry and, uh, and, and Connie, it's obvious that they're a remarkable couple, remarkable parents, remarkable members of the community. I'm, uh, I've always been honored to be able to say that uh, Larry was my best friend as we grew, grew up together. And uh, actually, we, we did grow up together. I think we met when we were uh, in the eighth grade, Buholtz Junior High. Oh, my goodness. Larry had a little scooter, and uh, he used to ride it over to my house. And uh, you young kids don't listen to this, but uh, our parents used to always say, uh, you guys cannot ride that motor scooter together. You know, Larry, you cannot ride Jim on the back. Jim, you can't ride on the back. So Larry would come by, and I'd get my bike, and we'd ride around the corner and hide a bike, and I'd jump on the back of the scooter, and uh, off we would go. Um, I think in the ninth grade, we got uh, little mopeds at the same time. I don't know why our parents let us buy them, but uh, we would ride all over Gainesville on those mopeds. And Larry was always competitive. He always had to have the fastest moped. 
We used to go up on uh, University Avenue on the west side of town where there was a steep hill going down. And uh, for those of you that, you that don't know what a moped is, it has pedals on it and it has a motor. And we'd get on the top of the hill and we would race down that hill as fast as we could go, wide open, pedaling. And uh, Larry always got his going 36 miles an hour. And, Mine would only go 35 miles. <laughs> and he was so proud of that. Uh, you know, Larry and I played a lot of sports together. Uh, in the early years, we spent a lot of time sitting on the bench together. Uh, I remember in, uh, in basketball, they used to call us the minute men. We would get in the last minute of the game, <laughs> way ahead or way behind. But I, uh, I remember in uh, my senior year in high school, Larry uh, was a starting quarterback on the football team, and he uh, hurt his foot playing football that year. But he wouldn't uh, wouldn't sit out. He insisted on playing, and that was the same year that the uh, University of Florida had a quarterback called Larry Libertor, same first name. And he hurt his foot that same year. And uh, Larry Horn and Larry Libertor resembled each other amazing as far as their size and appearance and whatnot. And we used to go around town and people would always mistake Larry Horn for Larry Libertor. They'd come up and say, oh, Larry, how's your foot doing? You played such a good game on Saturday. <laughs> But uh, Larry and I went through a lot of different parts of our lives. We went to college together. And uh, after our freshman year in college, that was the summer that, that he and I took off and went up to Virginia Beach. Uh, we didn't have any jobs when we went up there. We didn't have a place to stay. But we took uh, some camping equipment along, and that was the time where we uh, on the slept field. on the uh, University of South Carolina campus. Uh, the next morning, when we loaded up, Larry put all his camping gear on top of the car and forgot it. Oh, and we oh no. <laughs> started up and drove away. And about half a mile later, there he said, oh, I forgot, I left my stuff on top of the roof. And uh, it was gone, we went back, it was gone. And that was the end of our camping experience. Oh, <laughs> wow. But I remember that, that summer when we had left Virginia Beach, uh, I had a, uh, I think it was a 1959 Volkswagen that we were driving. And uh, we, were driving, we drove up to Michigan and we stopped through Cleveland, Ohio. And we went to uh, double header, a nighttime double header with Cleveland Indians. And I remember that was the, uh, up until that time, that was the record number of home runs that two teams ever hit in a double header at one time. And uh, the game didn't get over until pretty late. And we didn't have a place to stay, so we, uh, we just parked our uh, Volkswagen underneath the uh, like an interstate overpass, a little, little uh, campsite there, and we were going to just sleep and sitting up in the front seat. We weren't there very long, and the police came by and said, I don't recommend you boys staying here. <laughs> this is a dangerous place. But uh, we went ahead and stayed there anyways. And uh, I don't think Larry slept off at all that night, or slept at the sides of it. But, uh, Larry was uh, just as special of a best friend as he has been special as a father and a husband and a leader in this community. And uh, I have always felt fortunate that uh, Larry and I were best friends throughout those early years. And Larry and Connie, I wish you the, all the happiness in the world and years of life together. And, Hopefully you'll invite me to your 50th or 60th wedding anniversary. <laughs>